This personality intro is brought to you by Merrill. If you buy their boots and then leave them in a slightly damp area of your house, they'll disintegrate a bit. Merrill. 25 years is a rather long time, don't you know? The original PlayStation, Sony's failed project alongside Nintendo, that thing made by a company that wasn't anything to do with video game consoles, and only had a crap reputation when it came to the games it was involved in bringing to market, that thing is 25 years old. I'm measuring this by the Japanese release date of December 3rd, 1994, by the way, the same day Sega's 32X came out there brilliantly. So, hey, here's a birthday list. The Overlooked PlayStation games, a topic close to my heart because I'm one of nature's finest contrarians and will always find a, well actually, within me to argue why you shouldn't be talking about the obvious games everybody loves. They're not all classics, but I do recommend you give each and every one of them a go. Open your mind and all that. So here's 25 games for 25 years, minus all the RPGs because I decided I don't have time for that. Okay, there are two RPGs, but I wouldn't do a list without one of them, and the other one was an accident. And regular viewers will see repeat appearances here from previous videos. You might think repeats and no RPGs indicates laziness or shows a lack of imagination on my part. I say it shows consistency and the willingness to work smart. List. Had to be, didn't it? Silent Bomber is one of the best games on PlayStation, yet you rarely hear it mentioned outside of lists on similar topics to this one. Or when I'm blathering on about it again in yet another list of PlayStation games people tend to ignore. Anyway, it involves dashing about, planting bombs, and having a load of fun, and it's the epitome of an overlooked PS1 game. What an explosive start to the list. <sighs> It's of little wonder why this one went largely unnoticed on release given it was the sixth entry to an existing Japanese franchise and none of us knew anything about it. Also, the name is… well… Still, Yo-Yo's Puzzle Park blends the likes of Bobble Bobble and Bomberman into a challenging, hectic and surprisingly intelligent arcade platformer… bomb… thing. And it's cute, well, hey. This did pop up on Saturn a year prior, but that's not going to stop me because I am a renegade. Silhouette Mirage is treasure being treasure, a platformer cross-shooter that's harder than you realise. It features challenging boss fights and incorporates a similar mechanic to the later released Ikaruga with colour-based attacks. A classic? No. But even a non-classic treasure game is brilliant. The attention for platformers on PlayStation was gobbled up by the greedy bandicoot and avarice fueled dragon, which is a shame because Tomba 2, and the original, is a solid, inventive and challenging platformer. It's snappy, mixes things up a fair bit, and is… oh god, I don't want to say it… charming? Ugh. We don't adore guns in Europe, so the name was changed from the States as Trap Gunner. Still, it's the same game. A mix of Spy vs Spy and Bomberman, you're plopped into an arena and made to fight an opponent by laying traps for them, and sometimes punching and shooting them naturally. It's a change of pace from the usual one-on-one -on -one fighters, and it's still an engaging distraction for half an hour. There's something about plane racing that doesn't work. I think it's like Formula One. The speeds are so high, the distances of courses have to be increased massively to cater for the vehicles, and as such you get no real sense of speed from watching the action. I have no idea why I'm blathering on about this, but hey, engine racing is good fun and should have had more attention back in the day. Some games it's obvious why nobody paid attention. 1997 was bang in the middle of Tekken territory, so Tobal 2, Tobal 2, didn't stand much of a chance. Plus it only released in Japan. It's a shame, obviously that's why it's in this list, because the game is a fighter of a fair amount of depth and technicality, arguably more so than Tekken 3, released the same year. I would never have known about this were it not for my club of choice, the Corporation in Sheffield, which had PlayStation set up around it with different games on the go. As such, between bouts of pretending to like corn and Limp Biscuit to try and impress girls, I would lose myself in this madcap mix of minigames and, let's be honest, it was much more my scene than hanging out with the cool kids. Rid Ridiculous nonsense from after the PS2's launch, it's no surprise Power Diggers, Power Shovel in the States, went as ignored as it did. Should it have been? Probably. Still, this is my list and I have a huge soft spot for this mix of serious digging action and ferociously complex control scheme. You have no idea how satisfying it can be to move sand from a pile to a truck. 
A course running puzzle game of reactions, forward planning, and obstacle avoidance, it's a thing, no one can stop Mr. Domino is seriously good fun. You run around a course setting dominoes with the intention of triggering them on your next loop around. Good? Good. But really the most important thing here is that name, which goes down in history as the Stuff of Legend. This is one of those I always talk about. I probably have about three hours of footage from previous vids for the game, but no, I am committed and forced myself to play some of it again for what you see here. I'm not saying I'm a hero. That's for you to agree with anyway. This one strike series game is brilliant, involves stompy robots, and you should play it. Why Future Cup didn't get enough sequels for me to be eternally sick of it, I will never know. See how I lie about not including RPGs. What a monster I am. Thing is, I can't not include Vandal Hearts because I think it would physically hurt me. A tactical RPG from Konami, back when it actually made games, the mix of great looks, compelling strategy and ridiculous blood gushing won me over in the mid-90s. I feel it is mentioned these days, but it still doesn't get the love it deserves as a true PlayStation classic. Proving that name value is the only thing that matters, Twisted Metal's actual dev team made this one back in the day when the series it had created was ripped away from it, and it was promptly ignored because Sony didn't push it like TM. Anyway, Rogue Trip is car combat as you'd expect from single track, with the added bonus of everyone trying to pick up tourists at the same time. Is it a Twisted Metal 2 level classic? No. Is it better than Twisted Metal 3 and 4 every single day of the week? If this was still the mid-90s, I would join in the chorus of Disruptor is a good Doom clone cries, because Disruptor is a good Doom clone, pretty much. It's solid and well-made, and though it won't exactly stick with you for the rest of your life, it's a fine stepping stone in the evolution of first-person shooters on console. It's also got some brilliant FMV sequences that are peak 90s, and I love them dearly. It's a bit of a glorified tech demo, Stop laughing at the back, this was quite impressive in 1995, but Aquanauts Holiday is also one of those fine examples of a game where you can just be. Even the manual for the game talks about how there are no real goals or expectations, it's just about underwater exploration. And failing to communicate with sharks if my experience is anything to go by. An arena shooter like, what, Geometry Wars, Smash TV, any number of shmups? Yes, but Sandvane is also completely its own thing, and it's surprisingly brilliant as well as almost entirely ignored. It's also so very of its era with that thumping drum and bass soundtrack, but hey, I really enjoy this one a lot and you rarely hear it mentioned, so it fits here nicely. The karting game we all turn to on PS1 is Crash Team Racing, fair enough, maybe Speed Freaks if the Bandicoot's not your bag? But it's Toy Story Racer that, to me, is the surprisingly overlooked one. It's, dare I say it, good. Alright, it's for children and there's little in the way of actual challenge, but it's smartly made, very much in keeping with the Toy Story world, and you get to play as an RC car. That's one of the characters. A car. Because it's a toy. Brilliant. I'd say Team Buddies got buried in the hype, both for the then-imminent PS2 and because it was all naughty and had swearing in it and that. This is a shame, because it's a solid and unique take on team-based building and combat, offering genuine, though simple, strategy and a really fun little game of resource management and shooting each other in the face. Also, they swear! But not in the American version, because CENSORSHIP! Based on the Scarlett Johansson film and somehow released 20 years before it, I don't get how that works, Ghost in the Shell shouldn't have been any good, you know, like the film it's definitely based on. Except it is good, and you control a tick-like tank that can walk almost anywhere, and it's fun, and just like having incredible knowledge of films and the games based on them, isn't that all that matters? The forgotten third child of the series, Red Sun, mixes up the A to B story-led approach of the first two Colony Wars games and offers you the chance to pick your missions as well as fly around on the surface of planets. Yeah, I know it doesn't sound like much, but hush down, this is a great game. Its only faults were that it came after two better games in the series and that the story was meh. I would like this series to return, please, Sony. Thank you, bye. If you remember Return Fire, I can just say War Games is a bit like Return Fire and we can all go to bed for some well-earned rest. I fear that won't be the case, though, and I'll have to explain more. <sighs> well, War Games, right, it's a game, right? About war, yeah? It's based on the Scarlett Johansson film... Wait, no, not that. 
It's based on the 80s film, though has little to do with it, so really the important thing is that it is, as they say, surprisingly good. Ah yeah, this is also an RPG, damn it. But I can't ignore Kingsley's Adventure because the little dagger-toting Orphan Foxes game is a sweet little Zelda knockoff on PlayStation and it's not like the format had many of those. I wouldn't go so far as to compare it to Nintendo's Legendary series quality-wise, but Kingsley plays a fun game, offers a solid distraction and went broadly unnoticed on release for some reason. Runabout in some places, the far weirder European title of Felony 1179 is how I know this smashy drivey lark. It's basically a lot of crimes involving driving from point A to B, picking stuff up, smashing things on purpose and by accident, and having mild seizures at the warping and flickering textures. I recommend it as one of those games from the post-arcade period that evokes a very specific sense of time and place in gaming. Also, it's fun to smash stuff. Imagine a world where Gunstar Heroes wasn't on your home format, but you wanted it there, so you snapped up a game that looked and played a bit like it and released it exclusively on your console and the game was half decent, but also way too easy and not that interesting. You've just imagined Rapid Reload! It's by no means the best, but it's still definitely worth a pop. This has to go down as one of the all-time most surprisingly good games. I mean, why the hell should something based on a garbage low-budget TV show that I adored be any good at all? And yes, World's Scariest Police Chasers is the sequel to Chase HQ I never thought would happen. No, not literally, calm down. Car chases are fun, and it has just enough of the actual show about it to give it character. An unexpected treat, and probably my favourite truly overlooked gem on PlayStation. And that's a list with only two RPGs because I'm kind like that. Maybe I'll do another RPG focus list at some point, but I'm happy enough with this one. See you next time with the PS2's 25th birthday, which is in March 2025, so at least I have a short while to gather together all the games for it. Bye!